Kinjiro was an ugly, never-been-kissed loser, who developed Superman's indestructible body thanks to his family, using him as a punching bag every day. However, this also led to him developing a fear of women till he accidentally walked in on a butler trying to pull up his very feminine-looking underwear. He'd immediately apologized and shut the door, but he couldn't help but wonder if Konoha was one of those eccentric freaks with strange hobbies. While he was still trying to figure out why the so-called perfect butler was wearing women's underwear, Kono approached him. He told Kinjiro that he had to get rid of him for being a shameless peeping Tom, but Kinjiro assured him that he didn't swing that way. However, Kono refused to listen to him and attacked him immediately, but thanks to his ability, he wasn't affected. This made Kono commend him, but Kinjiro decided to take a stance and defend himself. His defense technique, however, turned out to be running away like a scared little chicken as he hated feeling pain. Kono went after him and even broke down the door to the science room Kinjiro had chosen to hide. Kinjiro defended himself, but Konoe was determined to get rid of him as he punched him multiple times. One of the punches pushed Kinjiro back and Konoe promised to finish him off with his secret technique, which he called End of Earth, a name Kinjiro found absurd and made sure to point it out. Konoe didn't like the fact that he was being teased and began to complain, but as he did so Kinjiro noticed a jar about to fall on his head. He quickly pushed him out of the way to prevent an accident but accidentally discovered something else. The fall had caused Konoa's shirt to open up, and Kinjiro found himself squeezing the softest pair of stress balls he'd ever seen. Immediately he realized Konoa was a girl, and not a boy he started bleeding from his nose, causing Konoa to give him a Satama-level punch. As he lay on the floor trying to explain that his reaction wasn't because he was thinking with his flagpole, Konoa picked up a fire extinguisher intending to put his lights out permanently. When Kinjiro opened his eyes, he was in the school clinic but one of his hands and both his legs were chained to the bed. Lying next to him was Kanana, who woke up and informed him that she'd sent the nurse away so they could have some privacy. Before Kinjiro could fully react to her bribing the nurse, she got closer to him and said she was considering what to do with him. She then told him she was keeping him there because of what he'd done to her butler. Immediately, he recalled his accidental rat grabbing and asked why Konoe was pretending to be a guy. Kanada had explained that the men in Konoa's family had served her family for years as butlers, however, she was a girl and the only child of her father, meaning that she wasn't allowed to become a butler, but Konoa had pleaded with Kanada's father to let her serve Kanada. He had agreed on the condition that she complete high school without anyone finding out she was a girl, and if her secret were exposed, she would never serve Kanada. This made Kinjiro realize that his finding out Konoa's secret and destroyed her chances of becoming Kanada's butler forever. Kanan had assured him that as long as he kept his mouth shut, everything would be fine. She then pulled the curtain back to reveal Konoa gagged and changed to the next bed, which surprised him. Kinjiro demanded she release her at once, so Kanada removed the ball gag before explaining that Konoa being tied up was the only reason the Grim Reaper hadn't taken his soul yet. However, since he requested she be freed, she would carry out his request. Realizing he'd be a dead man if Konoa was freed, he begged Kanada to leave the chains on. Kono, on the other hand, insisted Kanada release her, so she could teach Kinjiro a lesson he'd never forget. Kanada assured her that Kinjiro wouldn't tell anyone what he'd seen before she surprised, both of them, by straddling him. She then told Kinjiro that Konoa had told her about his nosebleeds and asked what had caused them, but he refused to answer. Kanada didn't mind and told him she'd get the answers from his body as she used a knife to cut up his shirt. When she began trailing her hand across his chest, his nose began to bleed causing Konoa to call him a dirty cultured cad. This only confirmed Kanada's suspicions. She told him that he was a weakling with negative 99 Rees who was scared of girls. Kinjiro tried to argue with him, but she cut him off and proposed a deal she was sure he wouldn't reject. She told him that she'd help him cure his phobia if he agreed to keep Konoa's secret and make sure her father didn't find out. Kinjiro tried to refuse, so she gave him a very detailed description of what would happen to him if he did. Scared, Kinjiro agreed to the deal, and Konoa promised to keep him alive since it was Kanada's wish. For the next few days, Konoa left home early to go to Kinjiro's house so they could walk to school together, and it made his sister curious. One day, while Kinjiro was sitting in class, his friend told him to be careful, saying that Konoa's fan club, known as S4, was bound to attempt to hurt him out of jealousy. Kinjiro brushed the warning aside as it sounded like a joke, but when he was almost taken out by a masked assailant, he realized he was in danger. Fortunately, the attempt on his life was thwarted by another group called Warm Watch. The girl who helped him explained that they had broken off from S4 when it became clear that their views were different. She then shocked Kinjiro 
by asking who was the bottom and who was the top in his relationship with Konoha. We don't do that here. As he continued on his way to class, he met Kanada reading a magazine and she handed him a ticket. She claimed that as long as he had it, he could get Konoha to do anything he wanted. She even went as far as suggesting he make her do some sus things if they would make him happy, but he refused. Later that day after school, Kanada arranged for Kinjiro and Konoha to go on a date while she watched them from a nearby cafe. She told Kinjiro it was an experiment to help cure his phobia and told him to go along with it. When she requested to speak with Konoha, he handed the phone over to her and Kanada told her to change clothes. A little while later, she came out dressed as a girl and they proceeded into the arcade where Kinjiro won a stuffed sheep for her from a claw machine. After leaving the arcade, they went to the park and while they were talking, Kanada called. She instructed Konoha to blow air into Kinjiro's ear, after which she told her to place his hand on her chest. Before Konoha could carry out the order, Kanada asked to speak with Kinjiro, so she handed the phone over to him. When she confirmed he hadn't gotten a nosebleed yet, she told him to use the ticket she'd given him as a reward. Kinjiro handed the ticket over to Konoha, who was shocked to see that he had it. After he explained that Kanada had given it to him, she switched up and began talking to him in a sweet voice. Pushing aside Kanada's cultured suggestions from earlier, he asked Konoha to make sheep sounds, which she did. However, Kinjiro realized what he'd made her do was a little degrading, but he couldn't dwell on it as Konoha started giving off crazy psycho vibes. He tried backing away from her, but she followed him and was playing something that would shock the devil, but luckily Kuriha kicked him out of the way. Kinjiro demanded to know what she was doing there and she admitted that she'd followed him because of the rumors circulating that he was dating Konoha. However, she was shocked to discover that Konoha liked to go about dressing like a girl and was trying to turn her brother into a crooked man. She then charged at Konoha demanding she give back her brother, but Konoha easily knocked her down. Kinjiro was surprised but didn't get the chance to speak as Kuriha got back up and screamed at Konoha before running off with tears streaming down her eyes. The next moment, Kanada came out from her hiding spot behind the tree. He then picked up Konoha's plushie and handed it over to her before bidding them goodbye. When he got home, he found Kuriha's teddy bear hanging on the wall. Kinjiro took it down and apologized to it before he patched it up. The next day at school, their teacher instructed them to change into their gym clothes so they could go do their yearly physical examination. Kinjiro instantly became worried that Konoha would be exposed, but Konoha assured him they could handle it. The first three exams were done easily, but when it was time for chest measurements, Kinjiro couldn't help but imagine Konoha getting exposed. So when it was her turn, he pleaded with the nurse to let him take her measurements. The nurse agreed, and he took the measurements even though he started to bleed. When it was his turn, he began to panic as the nurse was a woman, but Konoha came to his rescue and took his measurements. The next test involved the doctor listening to their heartbeats, and Kinjiro knew that Konoha taking off her shirt could expose her secret, so he intervened. Konoha pointed out that he wasn't a professional, so he hugged her tightly until he passed out. When he eventually woke up, he was outside with Konoha, and she explained that because he fainted they were allowed to leave. She also told him Kanada was very pleased to hear that they took each other's measurements. While they were talking the lunch bell rang, so they went to buy some snacks before going to the rooftop to eat. As they ate, Konoha revealed that she had never eaten lunch with anyone other than Kanada before as she had no friends. Kinjiro then offered to be friends with her, and it made her so happy that she dozed off on his shoulder. The next moment, Kanada suddenly appeared beside Kinjiro and congratulated him for not bleeding. She also thanked him for befriending Konoha, as he was the first person other than her with whom Konoha was comfortable. That evening, when Kinjiro got home, he found Kuriha waiting for him. After she confirmed that he wasn't dating Konoha, she admitted that she had fallen in love with Konoha. Kinjiro was so surprised, he immediately told her it was an impossible love. But Kuriha was so excited and didn't listen. The very next morning, Konoha came to pick Kinjiro up as usual. Kuriha came out of the bathroom wearing nothing but her underwear. Since she wasn't expecting to see her crush standing before her, she screamed in embarrassment. Later that day during break, Kinjiro was telling Kanada about the incident that happened that morning in Kuriha's confession when she burst in. She asked her brother if Konoha had said anything about her underwater, and he told her no which seemed to convince her that he wasn't straight. She accused Kinjiro of lying about their relationship and didn't let him explain. Kanada then injected herself into the conversation by saying Konoa was in love with Kinjiro. However, they weren't together because Kinjiro was dating her, which was an obvious lie that Kuriha refused to believe. To prove she was telling the truth, 
Kanata mentioned Kinjiro's birthmark on his chest. Kuriha was surprised and began glitching my grandma's worn-out video playing, but managed to gather her thoughts and told Kanata that her brother was allergic to girls. Kanata responded, saying that their love was strong enough to conquer it. Without giving Kuriha time to respond, she told her was willing to help her get together with Konoha. After which she pulled out tickets to the swimming pool and suggested they all go on a double date. That weekend, Kinjiro and Kuriha met up with Konoha and Kanata, and after they all got changed, Kuriha asked Konoha to teach her how to swim. Konoha agreed after Kanata had assured her that Kinjiro would stay with her. After they walked away, Kinjiro asked why Konoha was behaving strangely, so Kanata told him about how the pool brought bad memories for her. She said they had been kidnapped from there when they were younger and ever since then, Konoha had distanced herself from her. She also mentioned that Konoha had a weakness, but refused to tell Kinjiro what it was when he asked. Instead, she dragged him into the pool to play, and while she enjoyed herself, Kinjiro held on for dear life as he was bleeding. Later on, Konoha and Kuriha joined them, and Kanai asked Kinjiro to go with Konoha to buy some drinks. As they walked together, Konoha heard the sound of screaming, so she looked out into the pool and saw a girl drowning. Kinjiro instructed her to hit a lifeguard right before he jumped into the pool to save the girl. It wasn't until he held her in his arms that he realized she was a girl, so as soon as he handed her over to her mother, he fainted. When Kinjiro woke up, Konoha was next to him, and after he assured her that he was fine, she suggested they return to Kanada's home. Before they could leave, a little boy came to give Konoha a phone which rang almost immediately. When she picked up, a masked man informed her that Kanada and Kuriha had been kidnapped. He told her to come alone to a certain location, if she wanted them to be safe, and she agreed. Right before the kidnapper hung up, he flashed her a knife which made her go weak all of a sudden. Kinjiro recognized that her reactions were similar to his when a girl touched him, and he also remembered what Kanada told him about Konoha's weakness. This made him ask if she was scared of knives, and even though she told him yes, she insisted on going to rescue the girls. Having no other choice, Kinjiro punched her in the stomach to stop her from leaving. When he arrived at the location, the kidnapper told him he would play with him until Konoha arrived and proceeded to beat him up. Meanwhile, Konoha had woken up and was rushing over to stop Kinjiro from dying. Kinjiro, on the other hand, was getting a royal beat down and eventually got to a point where he was too weak. The kidnapper decided to end things by stabbing him, but Konoha arrived just in time to stop him. The man then jumped back and asked Konoha if she was still scared of knives, making Kinjiro wonder if he was connected to the first kidnapping. He then began mocking Konoha, saying she was a spineless coward. But Konoha refused to let his taunting get to her and charged at him. He tried stabbing her, but she leaped into the air and stepped on the knife before she kicked him in the face. With the man unconscious, they rushed to the room Kanana and Kuriha were in to check on them. While they were doing that, the kidnapper walked in, but to their surprise, he took off his mask and revealed that he was Nagara, Konoha's father. Kinjiro didn't have time to process everything because he fainted as he was too weak from the beating he'd received. The next time he opened his eyes, he was in a room in Kanada's house and all his injuries had been bandaged. Nagara was also in the room, and the both of them happily expressed their dislike for each other before Kanada walked in. After she dismissed Nagara, she revealed that she set the kidnapping scene up. Hoping that Konoha would finally overcome her fear, she then thanked him for helping her friend and left after she told him that Konoha was her first love, which wasn't something he was expecting. Konoha came in next and just when he thought she was going to scold him she hugged him. She cried and told him he'd been stupid for risking his life, but he assured her that as long as she was safe he didn't mind. Eventually, they pulled apart, but Kuriha barged in and accusing her brother of two-timing with Konoha while dating Kanada. Konoha menacingly told him never to lay a finger on Kanada, so Kinjiro jumped out of the window to avoid her wrath. A few days later, Kinjiro was celebrating the fact that Kuriha was away from home for the next few days by eating some ramen. However, before he could enjoy it, someone rang the doorbell, so he went to check it out and found Konoha standing there. The most surprising thing wasn't that she had on cat ears and a tail, it was the fact that she was acting cute as she asked if she could stay with him. Almost immediately, his phone rang, and when he picked it up, Kanada told him to let Konoha stay with him. She said she'd been kicked out the day before and had nowhere else to go, so he had to help her out. Kinjiro was about to tell her his house wasn't an airbeam for strays when he heard Konoha's stomach growling, so he invited her in. After she stuffed herself full of ramen, she asked him to introduce her to his parents. Kinjiro then told her that his mom was abroad and Kuriha had gone to her training camp. Immediately the words left his mouth. Konoha's mind went into overdrive 
and she pointed out that they would be all alone until Kuria got back. Kinjiro told her he was going to bed. She moved away from him, as she told him she wasn't from a red light district, so she couldn't attend to him in that manner. Kinjiro looked at her and clearly explained that he wanted to take a nap rather than create a redo of healer love action. Konoha calmed down but pointed out that it was way too early for him to be napping. She forced him to spar with her in the gym and after knocking him on his ass, offered to do the laundry while they took a bath. While he was relaxing in the bath, Konoha came in and when he asked what she wanted she said she was going to wash his back. He allowed her but when a drop of water accidentally touched her, she freaked out and fell chest first onto his back. Kinjiro instantly got a nosebleed from the contact, but they couldn't focus on that as they suddenly heard Kuriha's voice. After she explained why she was home early, she asked why he was taking a bath so early in the day. He told her he'd worked up a sweat which only made her more suspicious. Instead of leaving as he hoped, she tried to open the door because she'd seen female underwear. Kinjiro quickly instructed Konoha to get in the bath as he pushed against the door to prevent his sister from coming in. In the end, she forced her way in and fainted the moment she set her eyes on Konoha. By the time she woke up later on, she had no recollection of what happened earlier, but she dressed up to impress Konoha. Just after she shit Kinjiro up by pinching him, Kanada walked in dressed as a maid and she announced that she was going to stay with them. Kinjiro tried to get her to leave when she offered to be a maid for them, so she challenged Konoha to a duel. Since he told her he already had a butler and had no need for a maid, she believed the contest would help decide who got to stay. Their contest was cut short when Kinjiro fainted because he had gotten a terrible cold. Kuriha became worried about him as she believed he would die, but when he opened his eyes, he assured her that everything was fine. Kanada took her out of the room and left him with Konoha, who nearly sent him to an early grave because of her extreme treatment. When she stepped out to carve up some ice, Kanada snuck into the room. She told him that if he wanted to survive, he had to cooperate with her, so he agreed and she took him to see Nagara. When Nagara came out of his tent, he accused Kinjiro of turning his daughter against him which confused him. Kanada then explained that Konoha had fought with her father because of the beating he had given him, so her father kicked them out and said they could only return after they had settled things. She asked Kinjiro to make up with Nagara so things could go back to normal, but Nagara refused. The next moment, Konoha jumped out from behind his tent and kicked him in the back as she told him to stay away from Kinjiro. She then began dragging Kinjiro back, but he insisted she speak with her father. When Nagara tried to talk to her, she told him she hated him and never wanted to return to the mansion. Her words struck a chord in Kinjiro, and he tried to convince her not to speak to her father that way. Konoha refused and told him she'd been so scared when he fainted earlier because of how Kuriha reacted. She said she wanted to make sure he was completely fine and begged him to let her stay by his side. Kinjiro wasn't able to answer because he slipped and fell but he managed to get back up and approached her. This time around, he'd assured her that nothing bad was going to happen to him and asked her to return home before he passed out from exhaustion. A few days later, Konoha and Kinjiro were speaking to each other on the roof, and she told him she was ready to make amends with her father. Before she left, she thanked him but was a little bit embarrassed, so she didn't look him in the eye. As soon as she left, Kanada revealed herself and after speaking with Kinjiro for a while kissed him. Kinjiro freaked out and she teased him for acting like a loser virgin and even told him he was her first kiss. Some days later, Kinjiro was on his way to school when he got run over by a girl riding on a scooter. Luckily, both he and the girl were unharmed, but when he approached her, she screamed in shock because he was perfectly fine. When he tried asking for her name, he noticed his glasses resting on her thighs and asked if he could retrieve them. The only problem was that he was a pea-brained idiot, so instead of telling her he needed his glasses back, he made it sound like he wanted to check the flow rate of her floodgates. The girl called him a disgusting degenerate and tried to kick some sense into him, but he dodged her. As she kicked around, his glasses fell off, so he grabbed them before they could hit the ground. When she realized she'd misjudged him, she got red in the face, but as soon as she recognized him, she kicked him. She began stomping on his stomach as she told him her name was Usami. Kinjiro was still trying to figure out if she'd said Usami or Usagi when she got pissed at him and jumped on him with both legs causing him to pass out. When next, he opened his eyes, he was at the school clinic with Konoha sitting next to him, and she told him they had found him passed out on the streets, so they brought him there. She also told him that he was shouting some weird stuff in his sleep, and when she began listing them out, they sounded like he had been on the set for Fifty Shades of Grey. Kinjiro assured her that everything was fine and asked where Kanada was. She told him she was in class and asked why he'd been avoiding her like a curse the past week, causing him to panic. Before he could respond, 
She asked if they could spend time together during the school festival, since Kanada would be busy. Kinjiro agreed, which made her very happy, so she sat back down and told him to tell her what was troubling him. He told her he was thinking about his first kiss, and almost immediately, she jumped out of her chair in shock. It seemed like she knew something he didn't, and when he mentioned that he wanted to do it again, she freaked out. After looking around for a bit, she closed the curtains and leaned in for a kiss which confused him. Just then, Kanada walked in and Konoha jumped away from Kinjiro like she'd been burned or something. Kanada scolded her for being reckless and reminded her that they were still in school and as such she had to act like a boy. After Kono apologized, Kanada turned her attention to Kinjiro, who tried to get away from her. She easily pushed him back on the bed and straddled his waist as she told him she wanted to conduct another experiment. When she got closer, he started to bleed, so she moved away from him. As she told them their class activity for the festival was a cosplaying cafe. She said everyone was going to dress up as the opposite gender, so it wouldn't be strange if Konoha was dressed like a girl. Kinjiro left the clinic, but as he angrily made his way through the hallway, he was stopped by Usami, who told him she wanted to talk. They went to the roof, and there she told him to pretend to be her boyfriend until after the school festival. Kinjiro told her he wasn't interested in mid-plotted Sundar Wanibs and said he was leaving. Usami then revealed she was part of his four and told him there was going to be a war between his four and Warm Watch. She said her plan was to make them think he was dating her, so they would be destabilized thinking he had nothing to do with Konoha. Kinjiro told her he wasn't interested in their petty girl fights, so showed him a picture of him and Konoha at the arcade. This got Kinjiro's attention and he tried to get her to delete the picture, but she threatened to distribute it around the school if he refused to agree to her deal. Just then, Konoha opened the door and Usami quickly hid behind Kinjiro as she was too shy to face her. When Konoha kept asking what they were doing together, Usami made him tell her they were lovers. Kinjiro did as she said, but Konoha didn't believe him until Usami blurted out that they were going on a date during the school festival. Konoha asked Kinjiro if it was true, and as soon as he confirmed it, she punched him. After Konoha walked away, Usami told him to meet her after school for their practice date. After school, she forced him to go swimsuit shopping with her and even made him pay for it, after he accidentally saw her naked. On their way home, she told him they had to make their relationship believable by being friendly towards each other. She also said she'd put her faith in him and asked him to trust her in return, so he agreed. On the day of the festival, Usami met with Kinjiro for their date and made him buy her some snacks, but when she tried to feed him, Konoha put a spicy chili dog in his mouth. When he asked why she'd done that, she told him she was just making sure he kept his relationship pure. Much to Usami's annoyance, she stuck to them like glue, causing those around them to envy Kinjiro. Usami tried to get Konoha to leave, but she refused and the two started arguing until they were given a flyer. It was for an animal cafe, and since Kinjiro knew how much Konoha loved those weird sheep plushies, he suggested they visit it. While Konoha looked around, Kinjiro and Usami took a seat, and Koriha was the one who attended to them as the cafe was her class activity. Kinjiro was surprised to see that his sister knew Usami, so Usami explained that they were in the same club. After she managed to get Koriha to leave her alone, she admitted to Kinjiro that she was jealous of how carefree Kuriha was. Realizing that she was sharing too much, she told him that their deal was off and asked him to get lost. Are you serious? Kinjiro was confused by her behavior, but he left her alone as she'd requested, and was suddenly kidnapped by a mascot. The mascot pushed him down a flight of stairs and introduced herself as Nakuru, the president of the Warm Watch Group. She told him not to trust Usami as she had ulterior motives for approaching him. However, Usami didn't let her speak further because she attacked her and tried to attack Kinjiro after confessing that she had fooled him. Fortunately, Konoha blocked the kick, so Usami ran off looking like a scared child, leaving Kinjiro to face Konoha alone. She demanded to know what was going on, so he told her about the war and the implications it would have on him. Konoha then approached Nakaru and made her sneak them into the so-called showdown between the two groups. While they were there, they learned Kanada was the president of S4 and Kinjiro blew their cover because he couldn't keep his mouth shut. Kanada managed to prevent a bloodbath and announced that the war was a quiz game between them. Kinjiro and Konoha decided to play for the Warm Watch group, but Kinjiro made sure to keep an eye out for Usami. After the game had gone on for a while, the S4 group was in the lead, so when Kanada asked the final question, Kinjiro insisted Konoha answer it. She was hesitant because it was about her first kiss, but Kinjiro assured her that everything was okay, so she pointed at him. Everyone including Kinjiro was shocked by the revelation, but Kanada backed it up with a video. 
In the video, Kenjiro was unconscious after channeling his inner Aquaman to save the girl at the pool. Konoha had tried to revive him, so she'd given him mouth to mouth, which was a kiss if you thought about it. The S4 began clamoring for Kenjiro's head, so he grabbed the microphone and announced that the person he liked was Kanada. However, Kanada took the microphone and turned him down in front of everyone before escaping out the back door. Kinjiro went after her immediately asking if she knew Usami, and she told him that she resigned from the club before the event. Kinjiro then went in search of her and found her on the rooftop, so he asked her to explain her reasons for resigning. She told him that the first time she'd seen Konoa, he looked so lonely, and it made her think they were the same. She said she'd wanted to befriend Konoa, but was too shy to approach him, so she just watched from afar. However, Konoha changed when Kinjiro became friends with him, and it made her think Kinjiro had some sort of superpowers. This was why she'd forced him to fake date her so she could find out if she could be as happy as Konoha. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case, so she decided to end everything and continue with her sad lonely life. When she tried to walk away from him, Kinjiro grabbed her hand and told her they had to finish their date. On her way out, he got a nosebleed and decided to tell her about his phobia which made her laugh but it also made her open up about her feelings and how she wished to change for the better. So he reminded her that they agreed to be friends. Konoha soon walked up to them and apologized to Kinjiro after she told him Kanada had explained the situation to her. Kinjiro then introduced Usami to Konoha, and while the two were talking, Koriha rushed in and grabbed Konoha. She insisted they had to dance together and told Usami she could dance with her brother if she wished to. Days later, the summer holidays began, and Kinjiro met Konoha standing outside his house when he got back home. She offered him a drink and begged him to elope with her, catching him off guard. When she tried explaining herself, he suddenly felt dizzy and passed out in her arms, giving her a perfect opportunity to sniff him like a creep. When he woke up, he found himself in a strange room with Kanada at his side. Of course, she decided to tease him by making it sound like they had spent the night in a passionate and steamy embrace before she let him know he'd slept for an entire day. She also admitted she had put more than the required dose of the drug that knocked him out. After he calmed down, he asked where they were, and she told him they were in a hot spring inn close to the beach. When he asked why they were there, she told him she had run away from home, because her parents had wanted her to spend the summer abroad. Kinjiro pointed out that a rich girl's problems had nothing to do with him but she said bringing him there helped her plan. She told him that she'd told the innkeeper that they had eloped because her parents were against their relationship. All the while she was speaking to him, she was getting closer as though she wanted to kiss. However, he never got to find out if that was her plan because Kono interrupted them. Later on at the beach, Kinjiro went to buy some drinks but accidentally dropped his glasses right before he entered the shop. When he walked over to the counter, he realized he was staring at a pair of bouncy plots. When the person spoke, he realized it was Nagaru who tried to put on another pair of glasses on him. Before she could achieve her goal, Butsami kicked her out of the way just as Kuriha walked over to them. In the end, he bought some food for them, and while they ate, his phone rang. When he picked it up, it was Konoha, so he tried to get her to stay where she was, but as he was speaking, he saw both girls walk up to the shop. He immediately ran out and made Konoha wear some glasses right before Kuriha joined them. Kuriha was surprised to see Konoha dressed as a girl, but Kanata managed to convince her that it wasn't Konoa but her cousin Puniru. Kinjiro didn't think the lie would sell but his sister was a feather-brained idiot so she believed it. When they joined Usami and Nakaru, Nakaru complimented Konoa's glasses, but Usami didn't believe the lie. She took Kinjiro outside and demanded to know why they were lying about Konoa. Fortunately, she assumed Konoa was simply cross-dressing which made Kinjiro happy. While they were talking, Kanada joined them and Usami asked why she was on vacation with Kinjiro. Kanada told her that they had eloped and were planning to get married which surprised her, but she didn't believe her. She called Kanada a liar and said she wouldn't fall for her cheap lies as there was nothing she could say that would make her distrust Kinjiro. While she complained, she let it slip that Kinjiro had been to her house and had been the first to see her in her swimsuit. Kinjiro tried to explain that things hadn't gone the way she was making them out to be when they heard the sound of something dropping. When they turned around, they saw Konoa running away, so Kinjiro went after her. He managed to catch up with her, but she refused to listen and told him to return to his girlfriend. Kinjiro then explained that he had only gone to Usami's house because she offered to cook for him. After the meal, she stripped down to her swimsuit and tried to help him get over his phobia by rubbing up on him. As soon as the words left his mouth, Konoha punched him for bragging about his cultured activities with Usami, but he insisted they weren't together, so she apologized and they returned to the beach. Surprisingly, when they got there, they found Usami on her knees begging Kanada to let them stay at the inn, 
Soon after she agreed, Nagara showed up and insisted Kanada and Konoa return home with him, but they refused. Konoa even pretended not to know who he was and told him she'd call the police if he didn't stop harassing them like a disgusting old lecher. Later that night, Kinjiro awoke up and decided to take a bath in the hot spring, but he didn't realize Konoa was there until she spoke up. Both of them stay with their backs facing one another for a few awkward moments before they decide to leave at the same time. Unfortunately, they heard Nagari approaching, so Kinjiro had to use his body as a shield to cover Konoa. The moment Nagara set his eyes on Kinjiro, he made sure to let him know he didn't like his face. After he got comfortable, he asked Kinjiro what kind of relationship he had with Konoa, and he told him they were just friends. Konoa, on the other hand, didn't look too pleased about getting friends on, but she kept quiet. Nagara was pleased with Kinjiro's answer, so he told him to make sure he kept things that way. He then got up to leave, saying Kinjiro's face made him sick. And after he left, Konoa suggested they wait for a few minutes before they headed out as well. While they waited, Kinjiro tried to get her to tell him the real reason they had come to the beach, but Nagare interrupted them. In his hands were Konoa's underwear, and he demanded to know why they were in the changing room. Kinjiro lied that they belonged to him, but Nagara refused to believe him and tried to beat him up. As he jumped in the air, Konoa jumped out from behind Kinjiro and knocked her father out. When she came back down, Kinjiro pointed out that she was but naked and earned himself a punch as well. The next day, after spending time at the beach, they all dressed up and went to the festival that was taking place in the town. However, Kuriha noted Konoa was nowhere to be found, so Kinjiro looked at Kanada and she nodded in the direction of the mountains. As he made his way there, he met Nagara, who told him to leave. Kinjiro refused, saying Konoa was his friend and he needed to know if she was doing okay or not, so Nagara told him she was visiting her mother's grave. He made him understand that Kanada had refused to go abroad with her parents because she wanted Konoa to visit her mother during her death anniversary. Kanada soon joined them and asked Nagara to help her submit an entry for the beauty pageant taking place. After she left, she pushed Kinjiro in the direction of the graveyard and asked him to go to Konoa. Once he got there, she tried to get him to leave, but he hugged her and insisted that she introduce him to her mother. Konoa agreed, but halfway through, he passed out because of how long he held her. When he woke up, Kuriha told him Puniru had found him and brought him back to the village to be checked. She then told him they were holding a game where the prize was a kiss from the winner of the beauty contest and a large sheep plushie. When the game began, Usami and Kuriha approached Kinjiro and told him they had to take Nakuru out. It turned out she got drunk from drinking a carbonated beverage and was out to strip people. Usami was the first to fall, followed by Kuriha, but when she tried to strip Kinjiro and Kanad intervened. She swept Kinjiro's glasses off his face and told Nakuru to surrender or watch her destroy the glasses. Nakuru agreed, but Kanada tossed the glasses in a lake and Nakuru immediately went after them. Kinjiro was about to scold Konoa for losing his glasses when she handed them over as she explained she'd tossed the fake one. Since his guard was down, she took advantage and shot him, thus winning the contest. When he woke up later, he was with Konoa, and she showed him the plushie Kanada had given her. As they watched the fireworks together, Kinjiro told her he was glad to have her as his friend, but she stood up all of a sudden and told him she wanted to be more than friends. Days later, Kinjiro took on a part-time job at a maid cafe where Usami worked, and when she found him slacking off, she hit him in the face with a frying pan. Later on, the cafe manager told him he was needed outside, so he went out and was surprised to see Konoha. It turned out she'd paid for both his and Usami's time, and when he asked about Konoha, she told him she'd escaped from her watchful eyes. While she was in the cafe, she tried to get Usami to treat her like a customer, but Usami couldn't hide her irritation. When she got up to leave, Kuriha and Nakuru pushed the door open, causing Kinjiro to fall. After they apologized, he asked why they were there and they told him they had both gotten part-time jobs there as well. Kanana then stayed back to play video games with Kuriha and after she won, Usami gathered all the maids to blow her a kiss as it was part of the cafe rules. Tired of watching them attend to all of Kanada's needs, Kinjiro tried to leave but accidentally tripped. He grabbed onto the nearest thing which happened to be Usami's plots. As soon as he realized what was going on, he got a nosebleed and fainted. When he woke up, the manager went to check on him and asked if he was doing okay. But Kanada walked in at that moment and answered the question for him. She claimed he fainted because he couldn't control his raging hormones at the sight of so many maids since he had an extreme maid fetish. To make her lie more believable, she told them about the time she went to his house dressed as a maid. However, she twisted the tail to fit her lies and said he'd forced her to dress up like that. Uriha accused her brother of being a disgusting hentai freak before running off. After Nakiru went after her, 
Musami approached Kinjiro and looked at him with disgust. Kanata joined them and told her to be careful as Kinjiro always got turned on by the side of garter belts. Kinjiro tried defending himself, but Usami cut him off, saying she had noticed he was looking at all the maids in a strange way earlier on. Still, he argued that Kanada was a two-faced liar, so Usami told him to prove it. Kanada then suggested she showed him a glimpse of her garter belt and said that if he did not react, they would believe what he was saying. At first, Usami refused, saying she wasn't some cheap roadside hoe, but after Kanada called her a wimp, she agreed. Slowly, she raised her skirt and Kinjiro tried his best to act unaffected. Fortunately, when he was about to lose the bet, Konoha walked in. She barely acknowledged his presence before leaving with Kanada, so he went after her. He called out to her and asked her to stop, so she did and he awkwardly asked how she was doing. After responding to his question, she told him that when she'd said she wanted to be more than friends, she was referring to them becoming best friends. Kinjiro was surprised but agreed to them becoming best friends, so they shook hands and Konoha returned to Kanada. A few days later was Kuriha's birthday. And since she found Kinjiro sleeping like the dead, she left him a note and went out. By the time he woke up and found her note, she was already at Usami's house celebrating her birthday with Usami and Nakuru. When it was time for presents, Nakuru gave her a pair of glasses she swore could ward off evil spurts, and Usami gave her a life-sized pillow with Konoha's picture on it. Later on, they went to the maid cafe where Konoha and Kanada were already waiting to complete the celebration. They gave her a cake and sang a birthday song for her after which Konoe gave her a sheet plushie as a present. The gift made her recall her eighth birthday, when Kinjiro had given her a teddy bear which she used as a sparring dummy. Next, she played a video game with Kanada which she'd made specially for her. Kuriha and Kinjiro were both characters in the game. After playing the game, Kanada and Konoe took Kuriha home, and on their way, she told them about how Kinjiro had always made her birthday special. However, he'd forgotten about it the previous year and had gone to a concert with his friend. When he returned, she beat the shit out of him and told him how angry she was at him for forgetting her birthday. After listening to her, Kanada told her that she could come live with her since it was obvious Kinjiro had forgotten her birthday again. Kuriha refused and told her that even though Kinjiro was the most idiotic person on the planet, he was still the best big brother she could ask for. She said he'd always been there for her since their mother wasn't around, and she wasn't willing to trade him for anything in the world. After they dropped her off, she walked into the house and was surprised to find a big box waiting for her in the kitchen. Kinjiro then walked in and told her happy birthday before allowing her to rip the box open for her present. She thanked him and asked if she could hug him, but ended up beating him up again as usual. A few weeks later, school resumed and Kanada insisted on having lunch with Kinjiro and Kono on the roof. She was even nice enough to serve the food since she'd been the one to prepare it, but they had no idea she was up to no good. Soon after taking a bite, Kinjiro told her it was delicious, but Konoha started acting funny and began to take her clothes off. Kinjiro was surprised and asked what was wrong with her. So Kanada confessed she'd added some wine to the food. Kinjiro scolded her for doing something like that when she was well aware that Konoha was a lightweight, but she ignored him and rubbed some cream on his neck. She then asked Konoha to clean it up, and she grabbed Kinjiro's collar as she began to lick his neck clean. Kinjiro tried to stop her by saying they were best friends and that doing stuff like that would ruin their relationship. This got Konoha mad, so she bit his neck and told him she had something to say to him. However, she passed out before she could tell him. Kanada then asked him to take Konoha to the clinic so she could sleep off the alcohol in her system, so he carried her there. When he returned to class, he met Kanada by the door, but she was acting a bit strange and he confirmed something was wrong when she finished her sentences with Nyu. Those around them heard the sound and began wondering who was making such cute sounds. Kinjiro had to pretend he was the one just so she wouldn't feel embarrassed in front of their classmates. After they left the classroom, they went to the clinic, and it was there she told him she was finishing her sentences with Nyu because she had the hiccups. She said her hiccups always made her sound cute and drew the attention of all those around her. Kinjiro thought it was an absurd thing, but Konoha confirmed it and said her hiccups had caused problems during a dinner party when she was 10. Kanada then told Konoha to return home and get the hiccup removal kit to stop the hiccups, so she left immediately. As soon as she shut the door, Kanada pushed Kinjiro onto the bed and asked what he'd done to change Konoha. Kinjiro struggled to get her off him, but she was persistent and said she'd get the answer in some way or another. The moment she popped the top button of his shirt, he pushed her off him and ran out into the hallway where he bumped into Konoha. She noticed his open shirt at the same time Kanada stepped out looking disheveled. In her usual manner, she told Konoha Kinjiro had assaulted her, but he quickly set the record straight and said it had been the other way around. It was then they noticed she was no longer hiccuping, 
so she told them it had gone away on its own. But Kinjiro realized she'd been faking it. As they made their way back to class, Kanada didn't look where she was going and fell down the stairs. Konoha tried to save her but just ended up falling together with her. Kona was fine, but Kanada had sprained her ankle and had to be taken to the hospital to get her leg treated. After making sure Kanada was out of danger, Kono went to the roof and Kinjiro followed her because she looked disturbed. When she saw him, she ran to his arms crying, but Nagare interrupted them and asked Konoha to go home. He told her she no longer had the right to work as Kanada's butler because she had allowed her to get hurt. Kanada soon joined them and said she wasn't going to allow Konoha to stop being her butler. She said she would speak to her father when Nagara told her he'd been the one to decide on it. However, Konoha told her not to do so and thanked her for allowing her to serve her for as long as she did. She then ran off, so Kanada begged Kinjiro to go after her which he did, but Konoha refused to return. He had to grab hold of her from behind to get her to stop running and told her he wouldn't let go of her even if he collapsed. He said she didn't have to bear everything alone and asked her to lean on him if she wanted to cry. Konoha thanked him for being her friend and keeping her secret, but told him that he didn't have to do it anymore. She told him she had to bid him farewell and Kenju took a step back because he assumed she wanted to punch him. However, she surprised him by kissing him on the cheek instead, causing him to pass out. When he woke up, Usani was kneeling next to him and she told him Kanada had called her, saying she couldn't find either him or Konoha. She then gave him a ride to the beach and told him to make sure he brought Konoha back home. When he found Konoha, he asked to go back with him, but she refused, saying if she did, she would no longer be a butler. Kinjiro then told her that he didn't give a rat's ass if she was a butler or not because all he cared about was their friendship. He said he was fine as long as she remained friends with him, so she thanked him and agreed to return. Kinjiro made a call to Kanada to let her know he'd found Konoha and they would return the next day. She thanked him and said they could stay at the inn, but suggested Kinjiro take the chance to get freaky with Konoha. That night as Kinjiro and Konoha lay side by side, Kanada's words were played in his head like a broken record. Konoha then made things worse by admitting that she wanted to do more things with him than just kissing. Immediately his dirty mind began to imagine Konoha in various lewd positions that he had to shake his head to get rid of them. He then told her that they didn't have to rush things as none of them were ready to take such a step, even though Lee was secretly regretting his decision the moment Konoha agreed with what he said. However, Konoha surprised him by cuddling up next to him, causing him to jump out of his bed. Konoha quickly defused the situation by kicking him, so in the end they slept holding hands, while Kinjiro passed out from the close contact. The next morning, Nagura and Kanada came to pick them up and take them home. Later on at school, Kanada informed Kinju that Konoha had transferred out of their school, which surprised him. The news soon spread like wildfire and both fan clubs were completely crushed by it. Meanwhile, Kuriha and Nakuru received the shock of a lifetime when Konoha was introduced as their new classmate Puniru. During the break, Kinjiro was trying to find out which school Konoha had transferred to when she walked past him with Kuriha and Nakuru. He then surprised both girls by asking Kuniru to have lunch with him. During lunch break, Konoha met Kinjiro on the roof and he asked if she was okay being a regular student even though it was under a false name. Konoha admitted that she wished she could continue working as a butler, so he promised to sort things out. Soon after he left her, he made the treacherous journey to the S4 meeting room. They tried to beat him up, but he surprised them by defending himself after which he begged them to help him return Konoha to school. After classes that day, Konoha, Kuriha, and Nakuru were surprised to see the S4 and Warm Watch working together. They were handing out petitions for students to sign so Konoha could get her job back. Kinjiro was also with them, so Kanada, Kuriha, and Nakuru agreed to sign the petition and got Konoha to do the same. The very next day, Konoha returned to school as Kanada's butler and was almost as if she never left. Later that night, Konoha called Kinjiro to the park, and when he arrived, she thanked him for helping her get her job back. She also asked him to close his eyes, but when he realized what her intentions were he began to panic. His reaction made her think he didn't want her, but he assured her that it wasn't the case. The next moment, Kanada stepped out of her hiding place and threatened to kiss him if he kept refusing Konoha. Taking advantage of his distraction, Konoha kissed him and immediately they pulled apart. He got an intense nosebleed. That's it for today's video. If you like anime recaps like this, then watch this video right here.